past the vazool, baby. Come on in. Well, hello, Screamers! Welcome to the Scream Until You Like It podcast. I hope you're still screaming. I hope you're starting to like it. Uh, I am Clint Tentacles, which is a reference to the movie that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and joined with me today is uh, Mr. Canadian Boy Ryan from the Hormonal Werewolves and, of course, the Amityville Retrospective with a new video dropping just today. How are you doing, sir? Great. I really need to think about changing my name when we do these videos because <laughs> I'm always the same guy. Like you always change up your name. How would you feel about making a change? We fear change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all right. That's all right. Um, this was kind of a spur of the moment thing. Um, uh, this is an interesting opportunity. Uh, we are talking about a short film that was done. Um, mostly by uh, Morgan Thompson, who is now married, uh, Morgan Thompson Milam, or Milam. Um, I'm never going to say that right until she tells me how she says it, but that's okay. Uh, I'm just going to wing it until somebody corrects me. Um, at any rate, um, we were talking a little bit earlier about this, um, and um, I was made aware of this a few months back when she started the Indiegogo campaign for this. Um, and the way I understood it, it was going to be some type of, uh, alien movie, uh, because there's, uh, tentacles and so forth, uh, in the, in the artwork. Um, and I did, I think I kicked in like 10 bucks to get like a shout out or something like that. And, uh, all at once on, uh, Facebook, I find out that, uh, she was looking for people to review this. Uh, I got tagged in the comments and I was like, Oh yeah, I'd love to see that. And I, I'd love to get a sneak peek and to talk about it. And, um, uh, then I was like, well, I don't want to do it alone. Um, and Mike's not going to want to do this. So I was like, who do I know who would possibly want to look at an independent movie? Like but Ryan, Ryan's the guy. So here you I are have known to dabble once or twice. It's an important job. I need someone I can trust. You are my number one guy. <laughs> In lower budget movies, uh, short films, independent stuff, shot on video. I mean, uh, if it's a type of film, chances are you've seen one like it, right? Mm -hmm. You're talking mm -hmm. my bread and butter. <laughs> Me too. I'm actually wearing a shirt now. You know, Hell nice. man. Um, by, I am um, Tim not Gross wearing out in Pittsburgh. I am not wearing an independent horror movie t-shirt. No, I'm wearing my Halloween two t-shirt. You are wearing one of my favorites, Halloween two. Awesome. Okay, so uh, just to uh, kind of give a brief synopsis of what this thing is about, uh, without giving anything away, because this this is a spoiler free review. Um, so even though we saw the movie, we're not going to talk about any particulars about it. Um, other than what's already public knowledge. Um, what I do know is from Morgan's uh, Indiegogo promotion video uh, that it is four friends who decide to rent an Airbnb in Amityville uh, because this, of course, is part of a larger project. Uh, Donald Farmer is doing a Amityville Aliens series um and i i'm assuming that it's going to be mostly short films and they're going to kind of conglomerate them all together in some type of anthology that's my guess adding another one to the list <laughs> <laughs> another Amityville. <laughs> up with these <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you it's the gift that keeps giving or as as you say, the true curse of Amityville, the movies that never end. 
<laughs> so um, anyhow, four friends uh, rent an Airbnb in Amityville. Uh, the idea is that they want to like either use a Ouija board or use tarot cards or or something like that to try to contact some spirits um, associated with, I guess, the Amityville murders. Um, but instead, they somehow end up summoning an alien creature. And havoc ensues. Sounds so pretty good. Yes. So is it safe to say you like alien movies? I do. Um, alien 3 is my favorite mm-hmm. horror movie of all time. Uh, I like everything from Alien to Predator to that really weird one where Christopher Walken was like listening to jazz music in the alien spaceship. <laughs> Can't remember the name of it, but I think that was called Communion, wasn't that it? That was it. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> Communion. Is that what you mean? I must be awake. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I absolutely love alien flicks because uh, a lot of the time you get fun practical effects and goopy monsters, stuff like that. And that's right up my alley and uh, no spoilers, but this movie doesn't disappoint in that department either. Yeah. Very, very true. I myself am also an alien fan. I I'm, I'm a sucker for sci-fi. Um, I can put on Tubi just about any day of the week and look for some ridiculous looking sci-fi movie and just put it on and I'd be happy to sit there. And if it's good, great. If it's not, I'll, I'll laugh at it. I mean, it's a, it's a good time. I I love space movies. So the um, best thing to do, go ahead. No, I was going to say even Jason X, even um, that Hellraiser movie. (laughs) Bloodlines. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> what are we saying? I was going to say, I freaking love that about Tubi too. Like when you find just, you pick a random movie, you think you might like it and you're enjoying it and you happen to fall asleep to it because you're watching it at night. You wake up at 4 a.m. because, you know, you're 40 and you got to piss. And there's the most bad shit insane movie that you would never even think of watching that's playing. And you make yeah. sure you got to like, in your half asleep state, you got to like, pause the movie and you're just like i gotta remember that because you know you're going back to bed <laughs> you're not gonna watch the rest yeah. i fucking love tubi for that i found so yeah. many movies waking up at like god knows what hour in the middle of the night because i fell asleep yeah. to watching tubi i love it yeah did, did you ever start one um and just like uh within a couple of minutes like turn it off because they they did something that you absolutely cannot stand uh with a movie Well, I mean, the only time I'd actually turn a movie off is if it does something that just is not my taste, which usually you can figure out when you're reading the synopsis. I'm a bit of a uh, masochist when it comes to movies of bad. Um, I'm a completionist. So even if I'm like 15 minutes in, I'm like, this is the worst fucking piece of shit I've ever seen. I'm like, I I gotta gotta finish. (laughs) I gotta know what happened. Wow. All right. So I have only ever walked out of one movie and that is the remake to the house of wax okay so at some point there is a point of no return in a movie where you're like all right i'm finishing this regardless yep after about two minutes in i i gotta oh wow finish it yeah i can't remember what it was called now but uh there was a sci-fi movie i was like oh man this sounds awesome judging from the description of course the poster art looks great you know and i click on it and the first thing it does is give me cards of like plot synopsis that I'm not going to see. Um, oh. And it's, yeah. And we and didn't it's a, have the budget for this. <laughs> yeah. It's a progression of about like 20 or 30 years worth of plot. I'm supposed to digest in the first, you know, minute and a half of this film. And then they're going to start showing me a story. I was like, Nope, I'm done. And I turned it off. So <laughs> <laughs> that's just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, so, uh, Obviously, we had Morgan in this movie. Uh, she brought along some friends, Toby Toby, Joey Mann, Tim Hale, John Millam, um, Anthony Graziano, uh, Michael Rock, and Stephen Bunn. These are the main characters that you see in the film. Um, it's a very small cast. Um, not a lot of set pieces. Um, and, um, and I just kind of wanted to get your general impressions of this movie. Well, right off the bat, um, I'm going to tell you, I looked at 
I looked up the Indiegogo after I watched it. Mm-hmm. And the amount of money they got, I don't know how they did it. They must have used every single penny and pinched every single dime because the special effects in this are a riot. Um, I've always kind of felt, especially with these low, uh, these micro budget independent films, it harkens back to me to like the fifties and stuff when people were just learning how to do things. Um, and you look at, uh, your eighties horror with, um, your, uh, Nicotero's and Savini's they've learned based on the techniques of the people before them. And they've, they've kind of got a template to start with these people in these micro budget, uh, films don't have the privilege of having the masters before them kind of walk them through the basics. So they're learning for the first time, much like people did when the advent of movie special effects were beginning. So a lot of these special effects remind me of those kind of just over the top. I don't want to use the term goofy, but a little goofy, but always fun practical effects that just are charming as fuck. And this movie has a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and, and you hit it on the head there. Um, uh, looking at the Indiegogo campaign, they had a very reasonable budget, I thought, of $5,000. Uh, they did not reach that goal. I think they were somewhere in the neighborhood of like 3500 something mm. like that, when they finally finished up. And the only reason that they wanted that much money was because they wanted to make sure everybody who worked on the project got paid. Um, and and they could have a good time and everybody could eat, you know, all just all the human comforts and and making sure that your your work is appreciated. So how much of it actually went into the, the, the production and, and paying for like locations or effects? I have no idea. Um, I just know that somebody planned it out to where they had a pretty clear idea uh, about how much money they were going to need in order to get people involved that they wanted and to accomplish certain things. So mm-hmm. overall, uh, I'm with you. The, um, uh, the effects were great. Um, I, I didn't mind any of them. You know, it's like, uh, sometimes you, you can, you know, have a bad effect and get away with it. If you do like creative editing or something like that, or, uh, sometimes you can't skirt it at all. And you like can see the effect on screen. Um, I didn't see anything like that. Uh, this was, this was super well done. Um, as far as that aspect of it goes, um, I would say that um, the story was simple, mm-hmm. um, to the point. Um, I don't think it needed to be more complicated than what we had. No. Um, the character development was pretty straightforward. I mean, you you kind of got like uh, the relationship aspect. Like you knew mm-hmm. like, okay, the two girls are friends. You know, you've got one couple, you know, with this dude over here, another couple with that guy over there. Um, all of that was pretty clear. Uh, they had a good chemistry together. I felt uh, their their acting together on screen was good. I mean, um, everybody had a good screen partner, I thought. Um, um, I do have some thoughts written down if our idea is to basically just rate this thing based on observations that we made. So very generally speaking, I'm going to say that the video quality was good. The sound capture was good. Uh, the effects looked good. Um, the tentacles were gross, which is fantastic. That's what you want. Um, it had good sound effects. It had even had some video effects. I was, I was kind of surprised by that. Um, and the actors were good. And I thought the edit was great. Mm -hmm. this this flowed so nice um uh, like there was there was nothing like wasted like they didn't let something drag on too long before they cut it you know what i mean like everything just seemed to be like snappy and quick and and i i kind of like that um so overall i'm going to say this had slasher qualities um it had aliens it had comedy it had deviant sexual activity and at least one over-the-top death scene what more do you want? Only one. I I think there was there's 
a little more than one. Oh, um, you think? Okay. <laughs> well, I had one particularly uh, in my head that was like way worse than the Oh, other, I got the so. same one. I got the same one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, yeah, you, you, uh, a lot of the points you just brought up are fantastic. Um, and describe this perfectly. I, I just want to uh, reiterate what you said before with, um, the characters and everything everything's basically set up like this is a this is a relatively short short this is around 15 minutes um everything we need to know about these characters is set up in the first what 45 seconds um yeah. everything you described we know uh we know the relationships we know the friendships uh we get a vibe that these characters uh all interact really well with each other um and you mentioned like there's a lot of good on-screen chemistry i don't know uh, I don't follow the indie scene as closely as you do, so I don't know if these people are friends to begin with. Um, but it came off that way very quickly that these people were really comfortable around each other. Um, and you get that a lot in these lower budget movies where you can tell none of these people know each other and there's there's an awkwardness to the acting right from the get-go. This, this, one, this didn't have that. Um, you legit felt like this was just four friends that decided to film a movie in their backyard. Um, they pulled it off insanely well. Uh, I just, I, the ones of the movies like these that I've seen, this one definitely pulled that off leagues better than most of the other ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, this is, uh, you had mentioned uh, Morgan's directorial debut. Yeah like everything you said, like it's shot incredibly well. The framing's good. There's no, uh, there's no downtime. And for something that's put together, like I said, a 15 minute runtime, it, the story never feels like it's going too fast. You don't feel like you're getting confused by anything. I was blown away to find out that this was somebody's first attempt. Um, it just, Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, when I watched it the first time, I was like, if this is a first attempt, and uh, um, then we can expect great things in the future because uh, this felt very, you know, uh, very well thought out, uh, very well planned, very well executed, and pretty well polished. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, 15 minute short film, I mean, what's a stopper from doing a 40 minute short film, you know, not too in the distant future? Um, and before we know it, we might see a feature. Um, but uh, yeah, kudos. This was awesome. Yep. So I thought, since you are from the Hormonal Werewolves and you have a habit of rating movies out of five, I thought I would steal your rating system for this one. Um, I, I want to put a, a number on it, you know, and just have a, a little bit of fun with that. Um, because I like this so much um, and I didn't find too many clunky things. There was only one plot point that I was like, really? We're just going to drop it there and move on. All right. Um, uh, because of that, I, I'll knock it a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to give this, uh, I'm going to say 3.8 slimy tentacles out of five. 3.8. That blows my mind. I don't know. <laughs> It's the eight. It's the point eight. It's point seven five. Or <laughs> you can't handle it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, I'm like I... round numbers. Is that what <laughs> just, it's it's in increments. <laughs> okay. Uh, I a lot of what you said I agree with. Um, as I said, I was really impressed that uh, this was somebody's uh, first attempt at making a movie. Um, I uh, obviously um, I, I can't remember who said it, but you can't judge these micro budget movies on the same level that you're going to judge. A two hundred million dollar uh, Hollywood blockbuster. Sure. Now, having said that, I would rather watch this than a lot of other two hundred <laughs> million dollar Hollywood blockbusters. This was short. This was to the point. The humor in it was so fourteen. I don't. I don't know how to describe it. Fourteen year old edge lord, but at the same time, <laughs> it was self aware that it was doing yeah. that, uh -huh. and it it worked really well. Like. A lot of the jokes in this are almost a trope of the genre in itself, and it works really well. Um, everything about this uh, just was a hoot. Now, I the plot point you mentioned, uh, I know what you're talking about, and I do feel that if we maybe someday get a 40-minute movie or a feature length, that is something that could very well 
manifest. But I mean, when you got 15 minutes, <laughs> I feel that would have right. definitely added too much to a simple of story. Of course. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm around the same boat as you. Um, so, and again, for it, I absolutely, I mean, I'm a sucker for 14 year old edge. If anybody's seen my videos, <laughs> I'm a sucker for 14 year old edgelord humor. So I'm going to give this uh, 3.75 because eight is just masochistic. <laughs> 3.75 sausage pizzas out of five. Excellent. Excellent. Well, there you have it. We're in agreement. Um, so in a nutshell, it's great. Good job to everybody involved. Uh, and I hope to see more in the future. And hopefully the other projects that are going to be uh, put together with this are just as good. Because if it is, that uh, Amityville Alien, Alien series is going to be incredible. So it made me look forward to it. So. <laughs> Yeah, me too. All right. Well, on uh, behalf of myself, on behalf of Canadian boy Ryan, and on behalf of aliens that like to molest you with their tentacles, I say, remember. Smile, you son of a. <laughs>